I am here with Josh Tolles of uh, the Philadelphia Phillies here for our second video of Meet the Supporters of the Keep Smiling Foundation. Uh, thank you, Josh, for joining me today. Um, Thanks I hope for having me. Been, uh, well with you during this quarantine time. Yeah, I uh, can't really complain. Obviously, um, we're doing pretty well here. We're in Georgia staying with some of my teammates, so keeping safe, being smart, and just trying to stay ready. So we'll start out from the beginning. You went to John Wood Community College. What was that JUCO life for you? I, I personally know it. It was, uh, I think it's pretty hard in my opinion. But. Yeah, so for me, um, we don't have university athletics in Australia. So I knew in high school that I wanted to go to college and to get a scholarship from Australia was kind of hard. So I, I had to look basically everywhere. So I, I sent emails to every junior college probably in the country. And then John Wood came back and they offered some scholarship and I didn't even know where Quincy, Illinois was or had nothing to do with it. I just wanted to play baseball. So we kind of both took a chance on each other. And um, I went from a little beach community to a farming community, I guess, and saw some things I'd never seen before. Um, cornfields, snow, deer, like yeah. it was crazy. So it was a bit of a bit of a different change of scenery for me, but I loved it. I loved my time um, in Juco. I recommend Juco to anyone that's trying to play ball outside of high school. And it's a good, uh, a springboard that people kind of look down on Juco but especially today there's so many good programs and good competitions so I couldn't recommend guys going to Juco enough. So then after you went to Rockhurst right? Yeah so I took a year off I went back home um, I worked for a year and I uh, just wanted to be with my family I, I didn't go home during the two-year Juco period so I was having to see my family so I went home worked and then kind of missed the college side again. So uh, went back to Rockhurst University in Kansas City for three years. I had a red shirt year because I taught my UCL. So do, I, I may have the wrong – do they play at the Metrodome? Uh, no. So Rockhurst is in Kansas City, not Rutgers. Uh, I don't know no, where no. they play, but I think Rockhurst might have played like one, one or two spring trips there. But when I was there, we went to Florida for our spring trips. but. They might have done oh, that. Online. Online. I'm like, that's crazy that they played it. The old Twins. Oh, no. I, I, would, I think that was just a trip. But, yeah, our field was pretty rough. Um, no dugouts. Just chain link fence all the way around. Um, yeah, we, it, was, it was different. It wasn't the baseball school, that's for sure. <laughs> and then after that, you went to Indy, Indy Ball. Pete goes in American yeah. League. How was that that grind? I know a few of my friends went to go play in the Pecos League in the American League. How was that? Uh, the Pecos, it's crazy. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I went to a couple tryouts, some Frontier League tryouts out of uh, out of Rockhurst and didn't make it. So I ended up hitting up one of my friends who was already there with the the Las Vegas train robbers, and everyone was like, "Oh, sweet Las Vegas." I was like, "No, Las Vegas, New Mexico." So we went. I drove. I think it was like my teammates took me like six, seven hours. And I showed up during a rain delay and I had to pitch that day. It was crazy. And then, like, we went to a hotel and we slept, like, six dudes in a hotel room. And it kind of went. But, again, like, good group of guys. It was a sweet experience. I'm glad I got to do it. And then going to the American Association, that was – that felt like I was going to the big leagues. Like, we had a real stadium. We had a clubby, like, all this stuff I didn't have in the Pecos League. So, I had a great time with the T-Bones and loved my time in Indy World. You – and I read somewhere that you did hit in the Picos. Do you still hit yeah. today for the Phillies or no? No, no thankfully. I got there and they're like, you're up fifth. And I just laughed at him. I was like, why am I hitting? Like, this is <laughs> stupid. But, like, the pitchers prided themselves in just basically not striking out. So that was my goal every time I went out there. And I loved, I loved hitting there. But it's kind of funny that that happened. But I haven't hit since then, thankfully. I'm, I'm a small left-handed slap hitter. Kind of trying to try and hit it over short stuff. <laughs> And then did you go to the uh, ABL right away after? Or were you, was that mixed between, depending on the season? In between, yeah. So when I graduated college, um, I think that was in August, I went home and went to the ABL for my first full season. I played in 2010, but I only played one game, so it didn't really count. I'm not really counting it, but I, I kind of made my debut in the summer, our summer. So it, the way it works now, um, I spend the summers here, then I get to go home to our summer and play. So I play year round, and I've been playing in the ABL I think seven, seven or eight years now. Mm -hmm. um, 
started off with Adelaide, the Adelaide Bayern, now they're the Adelaide Giants in my hometown and I was there for two or three years and then now I'm with the Melbourne Aces. So I love the ABL. It's a great, great way to see Australia and um, a fun place to play for sure. How long is your like time off in between? I, I don't know. I haven't had an off season. I think the longest time I've had off is when I've been injured. Um, and unfortunately that's happened twice last year, but um, because I've been doing playing year round for so long since basically 2014, I found that for my body and that I need to keep moving. If I take too much time off, um, I just don't feel good. It feels unnatural. And I feel like I got to learn how to pitch all over again. So um, I just like, I take maybe two, three weeks off throwing at the most and then just get right back into it. Then, then you ended up signing with the Phillies in, the, in 2018, but you also played for Team Australia in yeah. 2017. What was that experience? Wait playing in uh, the WBC? That was um, really awesome. But then, yeah, I love pitching country and I've, I've got to do it um, a couple of ABO All-Star games was my first taste of the national team. And there's always a lot of pride when you get to put on your country's cap, especially for us Australians. I know for baseball as well, um, there's only been like 34 or 35 big leaguers. So to, to play for your country is kind of like a, a huge honor for us. So I've, I've been lucky enough to do that. At 17, uh, WBC was a bit disappointing. I didn't actually pitch, so I was the only pitcher that didn't throw. So I got to go there, take it all in, but then I didn't pitch. Um, and that kind of sucked, but uh, that happens, I guess. But then luckily we had the um, Premier 12 last year, so I got to finally pitch against Team Japan and some of the other countries as well. So it was an awesome experience. You got to pitch at the – was it the Tokyo Dome or the Sky Dome or something? How was – that was pretty cool, right? Yeah, the Tokyo Dome is unreal. Um, we didn't get to play Japan there, but I threw against, like, I think Canada, Korea, a few other countries. But we played Japan in an open-air stadium. But when the games we were playing them for the WBC and they had a sellout and they, they had their drums and their horns and their songs that they have is unreal. I've never seen anything like it. It's probably 60,000 screaming fans but only when they're hitting yeah when we're hitting it was like dead silent so they're all it's crazy how they do it but they do it right and it's it's a good fun good time and yeah they're exciting games then during all this did you already sign with matt matt gata up in uh new york with where i'm from um so i i met matt through some of the uh, he represents quite a few australians oh, yeah. and i um I just signed to go play in Venezuela after my first year with the Phillies and trying to do that process by myself, I was kind of freaking out and didn't really know what to do. And I was like, well, this would probably, I never really thought I needed an agent. And then I told Matt that the first time and I ended up getting back to him three, four months later. I was like, please help me. And um, he's a great guy. He's got a lot of, a lot of gritty guys in his agency and I'm, I'm happy for him that he's finally got a few big leagues as well. So big things are happening for him and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. And you're on that road, very close. You've gotten uh, you got the AAA last year, but starting out in Class A, how is that Class A to Double A in one season? What was that jump for you compared to like indie ball and over in Australia? Um, well, my road to affiliate ball was kind of weird. So I I did all this at 28. So um, I don't know. I didn't really notice the levels as much as more as like just the, like getting the opportunity to play in affiliate ball is not something I thought was going to happen. So when the Phillies called, I was just like, oh my, like this is, this is sweet. I'm just going to have fun with this. Um, like I'm playing with house money. I'm going to go in there and just enjoy and take it all in. So I went to my first spring training, um, didn't break with the team. So I was in the extended for, I think, three months to like the last week. And then I made a spot start with Clearwater. I've been a reliever the whole time. I've started previously in my career, but I had to make a spot start and a doubleheader on a Sunday. And um, Sixto Sanchez threw the game before me, and he's a, he was a big prospect with the Phillies. Now he's with the Marlins, but he was throwing 102 that game. And I had to start the game after him, and I was just like, oh, boy. Um, but it went well. I mean, I was, I was just happy to be out there and threw my three innings, and then I actually got sent back to extended the next day. So it was kind of a good taste, but then I joined the team. Um, after that, spent four games in high A and then went to double A and spent the rest of the season there. And um, Reading's awesome. It was a great place to play. Uh, just the whole organization itself is it's fun to play for and I really enjoyed it. So I'm still pinching myself that I get to be with the Phillies. That I'm now 30 years old. So it's 
it's kind of crazy to me that I have still have the opportunity to wear an affiliate uniform at this point. I mean, you're you're climbing the ranks pretty quickly. You are you're um, pretty good stats and but has has there any has there been any uh has there any been sorry any challenges along the way like is in like the hardest hitters that you've had to face so far or like any uh hitters that uh, like stick out to you last year um last year was tough so my my first year i had fun i had success and it's easy to have fun and enjoy it all when you're throwing well so i was super happy with how my first year went and, and then I came back for spring training and day two, I tore my oblique. So I missed three and a half months with that. And then I got sent uh, straight to Lehigh. And from not pitching in games and anything to go into that environment and facing those hitters, man, they just lay off everything. They're smart. They have an approach. And you really got to be on your best every time when you're facing them. Um, but yeah, making the adjustment from double A to triple A has probably been the hardest thing. Um, just the, the names you like, the guys you face, they all have big league time or they're they've been around for a while. There's not just like many young guys hanging around in triple A. So I guess that was the biggest thing. Like I don't really want to, can't single out one, one or two guys, but just in general, it's, it, that was probably the hardest adjustment for me and something I needed to work on this year when we start back up is just pitching more confidently in triple A. And you were, you were at the iron pigs in triple A. Where are they located? Uh, Lehigh Valley in Allentown, PA. Yeah. That's like, few hours away from me so when if you're back up there hopefully soon uh, i'll come out watch a few games of yours and get to yeah, meet you in person it's a great stadium they do a really good job out there filling it up too so it's always fun playing there and just that league in general like i like i said i from going to the pecos league in rockers where we didn't really have a whole lot to pitching in front of ten thousand people like most nights is it's unreal and it's just been a really cool experience i've got a few more questions for you and then i'll let you go but what was your coolest pro experience so far? Like, over from overall, overall? I think um, I, I love baseball, so I'm a big fan of baseball. So my first spring training, I got to back up a few games. And just, like, seeing guys that I'd only really ever seen on video games walking around a clubhouse, it's just, like, for me, I was like, what, like, what am I doing? It was, like, Reese Hoskins, Jay Carriott, I was just like, McCutcheon's in there I'm like this is crazy so I think just like being around kind of guys that I've been watching my whole life and like feeling like a part of that has been cool um but yeah other than that just pitching for Team Australia um in the Premier 12 has been great and just just super thankful for everything I've been able to do I've pitched in eight different countries so far in my career so I'm going to add to that further down but yeah I don't this a long list of just things I'm thankful for and I enjoy so I did see a video you did get on I think pitchers nation on Instagram for that is that a pop oh, ball or is that a curveball I I call it a curveball so I didn't know how weird I threw until I got to affiliate but when they started putting all these cameras on me but when I grip that thing I grip it with my thumb on and just during my motion my thumb comes off and that particular video they slowed down was just a hanging curveball that didn't really do anything and they slow motor and put put it everywhere. And I'm just like, you could have at least shown a good one, but yeah. it is what it is. And it happens. Um, it's tough to get a good grip on that thing, but uh, I mean, that's that's been very it's pretty nasty pitch. Though. Yeah, I just got to throw it a bit harder. <laughs> it's pretty slow, but when it's on, it's on it, and it helps me out a lot. And. During all this quarantine, what have you been doing to keep yourself busy besides, um, like, hanging out with a few teammates, like you said, you're staying in Georgia? Um, any hobbies or? Um, outside of baseball hobbies. So, well, right now, we, I'm living with a teammate. So, um, we play catch. We do our arm care. We run. We do all that. But other than that, we, we did a puzzle that really annoyed me. It was a 2,000 piece puzzle. It only came with 1,999 pieces. So we got to the end and it was missing a piece. That kind of ruined puzzles for me. But um, I never really got into video games a whole lot. But now with all this time, I'm, I'm playing uh, the Nintendo Switch more, um, a little bit of PS4, uh, and it'll be the show. But I guess not a whole lot, just watching Netflix, um, Hulu, and just trying to get outside and walk around and get in some sunlight when we can while 
practicing social distancing and staying safe, I guess. But we've been lucky with some nice weather. So just, yeah, getting outside and just kind of getting away from the screen is nice too. But yeah, no, no real new hobbies that I picked up. I should probably try and learn a few things, but it's, it's tough. <laughs> oh yeah. It's been a brutal two months, almost coming up on two months, but well, the last question I have for you, is there any advice for kids chasing the dream that are going to be watching this video? Just go after it. I mean, if you want to play, um, then really do whatever you can to keep playing. Like, I went to a Division two junior college, then I went to a Division two four-year, then I went to the worst independent league in America, then just kept climbing. So, if you, I guess, like, if you really have a passion for the game and you love the game, you'll find a way to keep playing if you want to play. And to me, like, to be successful, I wouldn't – obviously, making the big leagues would be the biggest thing that you could hang your hat on. But, like, I feel like I've had a pretty successful career with what I've had, being a five foot seven left-handed pitcher kind of thing. So, I guess just keep working. I mean, yeah, keep working, enjoy it, have fun, and just do whatever you can to keep playing if that's what you want to do. All right. Thank you for joining me on this uh, new show. You're going to be our uh, second guest on this show. Um, it's an honor to meet you, and hopefully next time I'll meet you in person. Sounds good. Yeah, let me know when you come out, and I'll get you some tickets. Will do. Thank you.